Alright, thanks for coming into another Cold Painting Table tutorial. Today we're taking a look at the Rock Gut Trogoth for the Gloob Spike Kits. So the model's going to be prime black, uh, and we're going to go with a all-over um, uh, base coat here of Eclipse Grey. Um, think of like a, an off-black, um, very, very dark grey uh, for the entire model here. So I wanted to start taking a look at the, I don't know, outcrops, or, or shards, whatever whatever kind of scales or <laughs> your name it, um, that he has sticking out all over top of him. And we're going in and basing those initially here with Bearing Blue by Scale 75. Um, like, Space Wolves Grey or some kind of dark blue-gray could work from any kind of line here, guys. Is this what I had offhand? I'm basically working with a non-metallic metal set from Scale 75, if you're wondering, an easy way to get a lot of the colors here. Now the next step is to highlight it, and we're going to use that Bearing Blue and Caribbean Blue. Um, so that's not, Caribbean Blue is not from the same set. Um, but you can see that it's like almost like a turquoise color, so really you could probably use like Hawk Turquoise or something like that here. Um, I chose not to because I'm going to use those colors a little bit later for the, the weapons, and I want some variations between um, the different stones that are shown in the bottom. Now dry brushing has a time and place, and today it happens to be on the back of this guy's back. So I grabbed a, a big old f uh, fat filbert brush, um, just from like Michael's, doesn't have to be anything fancy here. Um, focusing on like the top down as I'm brushing, not so much on the bottom up. Um, trying to hit all those areas. And then we're going to mix in some white with that Caribbean blue. Uh, go back with the dry brush. Um, Again, being a little bit more like, soft on the hand, um, not being quite as heavy with this, um, just to create a, a final highlight um, for the stones. And there's a lot of things that we could do here. We try to paint all of them like gems, but we are trying to get a model and on the table as quick and, and as efficiently as possible while still making them good. Um, it doesn't have to be that focused like it's a golden demon winner. All right, and now it's time to go ahead and clean up that skin. Now, here we're going to be highlighting his entire rest of his body with anthracite gray, um, and you can get pretty close to the stone areas that we just painted because we don't want to have that that blue overshadowing everything. Um, all that that Caribbean blue and, and the Caribbean blue and white. Um, we're going to give it a wash in a little bit um, to show a little bit more of a stark contrast between the two. But you can see like. Basically, we're going to use that Eclipse Grey as we had before as the deepest shadows, but the majority of the skin here is going to be the Anthracite Grey. And then to throw on a third color for our highlight, um, we're going to be going with some white, just mixed in with that anthracite gray. Um, it's not quite 50-50, it's probably going to be closer to like 60-40. Three quarters of it is anthracite gray, a bit more of it's white, because we're not trying to make the troll like that pale, although that could look infinitely cool, and I'm probably going to do another um, unit in a color scheme like that, just to differentiate them. but. Here, we're just looking at a slightly different take on, on the classic Stone Trolls game, or as they're now called, the Rock Gut Trogoths. Um, so, just be patient, um, focus on like the top areas where you'd be highlighting. This is cool because you can start working with some of the musculature as well, so you can take a look at um, all the fleshy bits, especially in their feet. If you guys are painting these yourselves, like you can see like the, the sides of their feet have just mass behind them. Um, so that's kind of neat. Kinda Now we do want some differentiation between the different parts of his skin, um, so we're going to go with uh, Privateer Press's or P3's Thrill Flesh uh, as the skin on the inside of his, uh, his ears, his lips, and then um, 
uh, his belly uh, and up into his ribs. Leaving his pecs the other color, um, but everything else is going to be that, that new, um, kind of sickly beige color. And now we're going to go in and highlight that Thrall Flesh with Menoth White Base. So two things, for whatever reason my camera did that weird thing again in which everything's a little bit more bluey than it actually is, so don't worry it's not the screen or your computer, that's actually the way my camera was picking up the model in the next two clips, that'll go away. Um, but we're going to use a very selective wash here of um, Privateer Press's turquoise wash um, over all those stone areas that we just painted. Um, now just be careful along the edges, um, it is an ink, not a wash, um, even though I, I thinned it down with some... Um, some matte medium, um, so it does flow pretty well and it's pretty significant in coverage. And you can see here um, where we're putting along the sides, the legs, etc. And we're actually going to do the lips um, and the, the belly here as well. Um, but I fit it out a fair bit, and you can see me actually going back in just pure matte medium, moving that wash around, trying to get it to focus towards the shadows. Now, giving that ink some time to dry, we're just going to go ahead and highlight all those uh, beige areas that we had with Menoth White Highlight, which is a very, very cool color. Um, I used to paint a lot with P3. I highly suggest it if it's not part of yours. Now that that's all done, we're just going to go in and start finishing off the base uh, nice and quick because most of the airbrush work is, is finished here. Uh, aside from the stuff that we would have to mask off anyways. So I just use Golden's um, Burnt Umber. Um, it's the, the high pigment uh, artist stuff. It just works really well for bases. You can water it down. It sinks right into sand. It's number one good times. Now this is going to be part of the same army as the squig hoppers that I did before. So we are... Um, dry brushing the sanded base uh, once that uh, burnt umber is uh, completely dry with uh, Vallejo model color stone gray. And then the last highlight for the base is using Vallejo model colors silver gray, just being less heavy with the dry brush, um, going along just dry brushing as normal. Okay, so two things are happening here. Number one, we're base coating that sweet, sweet club with GW's Dryad Bark. And number two, I actually masked off the majority of his body using Silly Putty. It's one of the best things you guys can use to mask off parts of a model while you're airbrushing. And here you can see why, um, actually now you can see why um, we want to mask that off, because we're going to highlight that stone club using P3's uh, Bloodstone. Um, it's a really cool, really reddish... Um, brown that's good for trees because it looks quite lively it's quite quite living next to a very cold model and now we're going to go on the opposite end of the spectrum for colors uh I use duck egg green um uh i'm assuming this like tree's been around for a while it's been dead for a bit so it's, it's, it's washed out it's kind of rotten um, duck egg green is that almost white um but tints of tints of green in it color um that i think looks really good on wood Okay, so we did give that um, the wood uh, a nice big wash of uh, Seraphim Sepia, and as that's drying here, I'm just going in with a little bit of stone gray and black, uh, just blocking out the colors for the stone part of the mall. I wanted to tie in that weapon with the base, thinking as it was just a piece of rock he picked up and put on the end of a stick. So I'm actually highlighting it the same way as we did the base. So we're going to use stone gray, and then right after this, we're going to use silver gray. The wash here is from Les Bruce Lee's um, wash recipe back from when he made washes and it was put onto the Daka Daka forums. Uh, just look up Lester Bursley wash recipe and you'll see the whole list of everything. 
Now the gemstone here is being base coated with a mix of black and hawk turquoise. Um, more hawk turquoise than it is black, otherwise the black would just overpower the color. Okay, now to start highlighting this, uh, we're focusing towards the edge away from the base of the, the gem, where light will really be refracting. Um, reflecting, whatever way you want to think about it. Um, so we're just going in with that normal hot turquoise, no black in there, um, just put in the base color. Uh, the first mix here is going to be uh, hot turquoise and white. Um, just make it a lot like a light blue, whatever you guys would really want. You don't want to take too many steps in between here, um, but we're just going to start hitting different points on that um, rock. Now if we look at this, we're going to go with pure white, and the cool thing is, is that there's a lot of edges to this, so if you angle your airbrush right, you'll only hit the edge, you won't actually go um, over top of the entire area. So you can see as I'm moving the model around, um, we're using the natural edges to kind of mask itself off. <clears throat> so you can see I'm going along the edge, and now I have an edge uh, highlight next to some solid colors, so it's a little bit more contrasty. Um, now we will fix that a little bit later after the wash. I believe you guys see that. A very thin down of turquoise, uh, very thin down layer of turquoise ink is going to go on here. Um, very, very thin. It's going to be almost like a glaze. Um, in the end, it dries in places I didn't want it to because I wasn't washing it well enough, and I'm going to have to go back and fix that. Uh, I end up doing it off camera, but I'll talk about it once we get there. And there are so many leather straps. Oh my gosh, there are so many leather straps across these models. Um, so I'm using P3's Blood Tracker Brown as a base color here uh, across everything. Notice that I did black it all out um, because it does give you like a black line effect um, if you just paint within that area that we just blacked out. Um, just watch your brush control, take your time, and hit all your areas. All we're looking for is a nice even coat. Um, it doesn't have to be too thick. Um, the nice thing is this does cover over black really well. So take your time um, and don't miss any of them because it's a pain in the butt to, to realize that you missed one at the end. Now as this is going on, I'm just going to mention that um, I didn't film painting his loincloth because it's the exact same way that I did the, uh, the Squeak Rider's cloth. Uh, on his body, so basically he is just anthracite gray, um, um, sketched on uh, graphite, and then a black wash. <clears throat> because I want them to be as part of the same army, that's going to be like one of the, the signifying themes going across them. I end up doing the bag that he has full of rocks there, the same way I did the back of the stone mall here as well. All right, we we hit those areas. Oh, and you guys actually saw how I'm staying so well in in, in scheme here or in frame, because uh, my buddy Steve told me to create uh, just like markers on the um, the mat that I paint on um, to make sure that I know where my hand should be, which is why I'm very rarely off uh, camera now, which is super rad. So thank you for that uh, great idea there, Steve. Now here um, we're just highlighting all those straps with bootstrap leather, um, just going around making sure everything's all nice and set. Right on. Uh, the teeth here, uh, as well as the big tooth on his neck, uh, is going to be done in tenor yellow, and then we're going to highlight that with white sands. Um, you can see that there's some green, um, like fungus or whatever you want to call it, along the wood now. Um, that was just, um, oh gosh, a dark green and then a pale green on top of it. I can't remember what it does off the top of my head. Um, we did the hanging gemstones the same way as we did the uh, 
uh, big mall. His eyes will be done in Sol Yellow, uh, and we're getting really close towards the end of the mall here, guys. Okay, uh, we're gonna go in real fine like and hit um, those areas with white sands. Um, the nails were, and, like toenails and then claws, were all just done in black and uh, just highlighted ones with anthracite gray. Um, and that's what we're taking a look at. We're gonna see uh, a finished 360 of the model in a little bit, um, but we'll see that uh, after the break. And here's a completed model, guys. Uh, the one thing I did go back and do after uh, I did this little 360 um, is just black line the straps on his left, uh, sorry, right foot uh, because it looked better in the end. Um, the next thing coming up in the queue, um, we're going to take a look at Sean from the God Sworn Hunt uh, uh, for uh, Warhammer Underworlds, uh, and then some more Blackstone Fortress stuff, uh, looking at the Renegades, uh, the Renegade Psychers up next. But again, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, uh, share, and subscribe. It helps me a ton. And if you guys want to see things in the future, make a comment below. Thanks a lot, and have a good one.